Now, ideally, and I believe the company, I know, certainly know that Dave Tether's working on this, uh, and I believe that Victron is uh, potentially one of his partners in working on it. When you look at this whole system, you really go, the battery bank is just a giant UPS. You've got multiple sources of charging. You know, we've got 400 so watts of solar panel on the back of the boat. You've got shore power. You've got generator. You've got recharging capability. So ideally, you basically want an inverter slash charger that addresses the battery bank, does not care what sort of power it's being fed, AC, DC, 120, 110, 240, 50, 60 cycle, all could be fed into it and it simply sits there and operates the battery bank like a UPS and it senses what power is hooked up to it. So if you are not hooked up to shore power, it senses that and says, oh, I need to go and turn the generator on. I'll charge the batteries back up, turn off. You know, so a completely automatic charging regimen and I mean you know this technology exists it's out there but it's not designed for the marine environment mm. and it's in bits and pieces mm. so if those get brought back together into a piece of marine equipment then you've got a walk on the boat turn the ignition key and forget it okay uh, and the only thing you'll be concerned about is is it does the generator eventually run out of diesel <laughs> but, but every, everything else it will be a, a walk on and forget it environment uh, I, I would say for people who've never been on an electric drive boat, the one thing that you do face as an operator of this boat is that the, we do have a few extra switches uh, that control battery banks, things like this. And so there is a little bit of sequence that you walk through in mm -hmm. taking the boat off the dock, making sure you've switched on and off the right thing, switching over power sources, etc. Um, outside of that, uh, once you're out on the water, uh, I look at this and go, no, this is far easier than a normal boat to operate simply because, and more efficient, because the generator is automatically turning on and off, the air conditioners are running through the inverter off the battery bank, the generator directly charges the battery bank, or the shore power charges it through charges. Um, so there is a, a, a fair degree of turn it on and forget it. Uh, where people would suspect that this sort of boat is more maintenance oriented over its drive system, etc. Uh, what I've just described is the perfect scenario where actually all the charging systems were controlled, but even without that, uh, at the moment all I have to do is go, well, when I come on the boat, throw charger switches, couple of switches, and I'm away. Whereas on a diesel drive boat, you simply come in and change from shore power to battery power. Uh, and then you go and try to make sure that the engines will start. <coughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> now, if this if this boat, uh, in its present form, it's a 41-foot lagoon, yeah. uh, there is a 42-foot uh, lagoon, but the 41-foot lagoon, what size horsepower uh, sail drives or straight shaft drives did they put in it when they didn't make it electric? These, the, the 41s were all done with 9 horsepower. No, I, mean, I don't mean electric, uh, I mean from a diesel perspective. Oh, from the diesel. Did they have 27, 37? They, they offered a range from between about 27 through to about 40. Okay, so this, what, yeah. This is more anecdotal. What I did read, which was uh, on a uh, web blog, was an, arti a, a, an article from a guy who had chartered this boat and said he got in a drag race with another boat. <laughs> 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 another 41 footer uh, and said he had no trouble holding his own and in fact I think he ended up beating the guy back to the dock was my recollection of the article <laughs> um, and I could well believe it uh, I, I, I tend to look at this and say I have excess power here oh, yeah, you do. Um, I you know it, it has not been a requirement uh, even when we're going through uh, locks and bridges where you've got a lot of turbulence and current. Uh, I myself have never pushed these at more than uh, 50 amps an engine, which is half of what they're capable of doing. Uh, and looked and said, oh, I don't need to push it any harder. And that's only in very short bursts, and it's only when you, you know, like coming through a lock and you've got all of that turbulence sweeping you around. Well, this boat, I'm not waiting for the engines to build up to two and a half thousand RPM. 
to give me maximum torque. I've got it. Mm -hmm. So I can very quickly just shove the boat sideways. Uh, you know, the, the, the reaction time on this boat compared to diesel drive is just phenomenal. The, this instant torque at zero RPM versus a diesel that's got to one build up the RPM and you're doing that with the boat in drive. So you're building it, build, trying to get up into your torque band against the prop resistance. So that, that time that it takes to get up into your torque band to generate the power, mm -hmm. I can do everything you can do once you've got all that torque, but I can do it from zero. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that, that certainly makes you do some things that other people would look at and go, oh, that was, that was risky. And one of those instances was actually down when we were bringing the boat back from uh, Tortola. We came over to Red Hook to resupply. There was 20 knots blowing straight into Red Hook, and the harbour master just directed us to an outside slip that we were able to just come straight in off the fairway and straight into the slip. We tie up, then we go looking for where the power outlet is on the dock. Well, the power outlet was way around the dock, so we were actually in the wrong way to hook up to power. So we said, okay, let's just take the boat out, flip it around, and put it back in. Now, where we were, three stories above us, there was an open bar and there's about 150 people up there and I'm looking around and right around me is a lot of other catamarans, a lot of Noisman 447s and they weren't charter boats, they're obviously privately owned because you can just look at every boat and see all the different equipment on board. What I didn't know was that half the owners of these boats were up in the bar. So we untied, pulled the boat back out and I did not get out more than half a boat length to spin the boat round on itself and put it back in. And when they saw me turning with that in 20 knots of breeze, with not a full boat length, out of the slip, they thought that I was just going to be rammed sideways into the pile, so they started running down the dock. They helped fend me off, and so by the time they got to the boat, we're back in the slip, and of course, the engines are off. And so they were like, oh, that was risky. And I'm going, well, no, yeah. Well, you, you, you could have taken a lot more space and you wouldn't have risked coming sideways onto the piles. I go, no, that wasn't a problem. And they're going, well, and how'd you get your engines off so fast? I said, well, I don't have diesel engines. <laughs> they're standing there going, well, yeah, I've got unlimited horsepower, zero RPM, unlimited torque. Yeah. Oh. But, and then we go to the bar, and, and they're all just talking about how we were able to accelerate so rapidly, and that in their eyes, what we did was we brute forced the boat around. I looked at it and said, why take the boat, you know, in, in, in wind like that, when you've got 20 knots of wind that was going to be coming against the side of the boat, why would I take the boat further out, <clears throat> stay close in near the pile so mm -hmm. that we can, if my maneuvering was wrong, yeah. we just grab a pile and pivot the boat back in. <laughs> so, so, uh, it was, an inter it was an interesting experience for both me and them. Uh, but it was the, the first time I'd seen how surprised other catamaran owners were mm -hmm. at the ability of this boat to accelerate from zero and to stop. This boat can stop within a boat's length from hull speed simply by putting it in reverse. Mm, that's amazing. But the, the torque you generate is such that you can actually, you know, the plastic coupling in the shaft here, you carry a spare simply because you can dim disintegrate it, you've got so much torque. So, I mean, the, the end result of all of that was that I never really used that much power. That's why I believe that, you know, had this boat originally come with four and a half horsepower engines, I'd still be very happy. Yeah? I have no trouble pushing the boat along at hull speed, one engine, and nowhere near 100 amps. So, there we go.